Yesterday, I posted a couple of videos about AI and its effect on us. We talked a lot about ChatGPT and how to engineer prompts so that you get the types of results that you're looking for. Adding in things like, tell me this from a feminine perspective. Tell me this from a perspective of someone born in the 1960s. Give me the perspective of a modern Buddhist monk versus a Buddhist monk of the 15th century. Asking very, very specific questions in your queries is the way to get tools like ChatGPT to really work for you. I say that if your prompt is less than 40 words, and what I mean by prompt, well, in Google, we go in and we say, what's a good Thai restaurant uh, near me? With ChatGPT, we have to be very specific. What is a good Thai restaurant in this zip code? I want to see them ranked by their Yelp reviews. I prefer to see Yelp reviews that mention the word spicy and talk about people that have visited Thailand or were born in Thailand. I want the word authentic to become at the top of this. You might want to even say things like, I want you to be my restaurant reviewer. I'm adding different words and there's different websites out there that will help you learn how to prompt an AI. Um, I like to see prompts that are like a pretty long paragraph. And there are a couple of different websites that can help. I can share those in the comments. Speaking of comments, one of the things I always find interesting about the people that follow my videos is that many of you are executives, so you don't tend to post in the comments. You, you call me or text me or hit me up in my DMs, which is completely fine, and I love that. Thank you for doing that. And it really does help me uh, know how to continue to make great content that's relevant to you. I think the biggest question that I was asked yesterday after posting those videos is... Um, how is this going to affect my kids? Um, will this take their jobs? I think we all understand that even though AI is here and we're on the forefront of a very new technology and a new way of thinking and doing work, that it will take some time for these things to be integrated into the business community. Now, I think some will happen faster than others, and I think ChatGPT has sort of proven that. Um, we, I was talking with somebody here just recently, and they were saying that um, you know, that, that, that schools are seeing many, many more kids getting A's on papers now than they did just a few months ago. So if the average, if we think about what is the average, well, the average is a C, right? Um, now all of a sudden C students are writing A papers and, 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 and that is a bit of a challenge because there's no bell curve anymore, but eventually there will be because tools like AI aren't meant to replace us per se. They really are here to augment us, to give us a better, um, it, it's like a tool. I mean, if you think about cars, I mean, we all use cars today, but at one point, just 125 years ago, people were terrified of cars, particularly people that were farriers or people that sold horses or owned stables. These people were terrified and they felt like it was the end of the world coming to them. But they assimilated. They either became much more specialized and they got into, you know, people that want to collect horses and people that have ranches and maybe they had to relocate to find their customers, but they were able to do that successfully. I think the same is true of, uh, of, of agriculture. If you look at the technology we use today to harvest agriculture, it's unbelievable. And I could certainly see that 30 or 40 years ago, people were wringing their hands and saying, what's going to happen to all the field laborers? What's going to happen to all the people that are picking the turnips and the radishes and the potatoes? Again, the world has changed. Other opportunities have come about. That brings me to how um, the, the industries I do believe that are going to be affected by AI. And then let's talk a little bit about how you can benefit from this. I think one of the most staggering things with AI, and if you're not familiar with my show, The Convergence, um, please tune in. It's a show that's been going on for over a year, very popular podcast and YouTube channel that talks about Web3 and uh, blockchain, crypto, AI, virtual reality, all of these topics that we're talking about today. Um, I think what's most interesting is that if I look back at old episodes, one of the things that I find is that even six or eight months ago, experts were saying the two things that would that AI could not replace would be writing, being able to write articles and books, novels, songs, poems, those kind of things. And secondly was art. Now, the fascinating thing is this, the two things, if you look at the list of 600 AI tools that my friend AI Daddy has put out, and if you want to link to that, 
I can send that to you. Just hit me up or follow him on Twitter and look at his link tree or Twitter at Twi uh, TikTok and look at his link tree. I think the most fascinating thing about it is those are the two things where most AI technology has been focused on. And those are the two things that were the most uh, widely affected right out of the gate. The two things that we said AI couldn't do are the first two things that it did very, very successfully. So I'm not a firm believer that what AI will replace is the mundane frontline worker jobs. I think those require a lot of robotic technology. I think those require physical limit. They have physical limitations that require people to move things and pick up things and deal with things and stock things. That's going to take some time. There's robots out there that can do it already. They have been for a few years, but we're not seeing them widely deployed because of their cost. They're just very expensive. It's still cheaper to hire human beings to do some of these work, some of this work. Now, the areas I do feel that are going to be affected are more higher paid, easier to, uh, to, to replace because they don't require a physical robot to do it. What am I talking about? I'm talking about like attorneys, accountants. There's actually a chat AI or chat GPT has passed the bar exam and is now successfully arguing cases and, and assisting attorneys in that process. Um, last week, uh, chat GPT uh, passed the Google engineering uh, hiring requirements for a level three software engineer. Now that's $183,000 a year base salary job, chat GPT can perform all of the functions for that job. Think about that. Chat GPT can do the work of $183,000 a year programmer. And actually it can't just do the work of one. It can do the work of hundreds of thousands of $183,000 a year top level engineers. That can tell you something. Um, I think what we're going to see creative writing ads my videos that I do right now, I use AI on the back end to listen to these videos and tell me how to uh, make them better each time. It actually gives me a score about my probability of going viral, all sorts of different things that we're using. I use Repurpose IO, which is another little AI tool that helps me to cut little video clips and post them and schedule them and find the optimal times to use them. So a lot of the things that we thought were going to be difficult to replace ad agencies, marketing people, content writers, therapists. Those are the things that we have to be the most concerned about. Now, when I say concerned, I'm not concerned that those things will go away. What actually I think is going to happen is that people in those spaces will adopt AI and look at it as a tool. How many of you have one of these? <laughs> we all have one of these. Why do we have one of these? Because it is a tool is extension of us. It gives us access. It allows us to process and do things that we cannot do quickly enough with our mind. If you're as old as I am, I'm now 49. You remember as a kid, you know, the kids that had the huge advantage in school were the kids whose parents could afford encyclopedias because they had the library at their hands. We couldn't afford that. So my mom would have to drive us downtown sit in the parking lot. We'd have to go in, do our research, make photocopies of things, take books out, take them home, read them. That's a that's an era far gone. Now, in a few seconds, I can go to ChatGPT and name a book for it. One of my favorite prompts is about the book Flatland by Edwin A. Abbott. And I can say, hey, I want you to summarize the book Flatland in three sentences. Boom. It just spits it right out. <clears throat> so there's a great opportunity here for us to augment our reality what we live in right now with these amazing tools that are coming out. The people who are going to make the most money in the next few years are the people that are figuring this out. Maybe you are a software developer working at a big company. Get into AI right now. Start programming AI to do your job because for the next year, maybe two years, uh, these companies are going to take some time to figure this out. And You'll be able to automate your work. You'll be able to write your papers, do all these kind of things with an AI by just learning how to engineer prompts. And prompt engineering is going to be the fastest growing market um, of anything that's going to be ha happening in the next few years. If you have a kid right now that's in high school or college age, I would tell them, start looking into prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is going to be a highly desirable skill, primarily because you and I, the people who are our age, are so used to asking Google in very specific ways to do things that it's not going to work. So many times when we ask Google, we ask it questions now. 
that wasn't really what it was designed for. Originally, you were supposed to say search for X, 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 X. You know, not, now we actually ask it questions. You know, uh, what is the square root of 26? Well, being able to dig deeply into these prompts and get the information and the research out of them is going to be a highly desirable skill. I mean, highly desirable. I can imagine right now, if I was to go on Fiverr or Upwork, there's already people that are out there making a living helping you figure out ways to generate prompts. A prompt advisor would be an incredible job right now. Getting online with somebody who has access to a good AI, like the back end of ChatGPT, the plus side or the API, and being able to ask them a few questions, tell them about your problem, and they craft a number of prompts for you and work with you to get the results that you want. Now, when we talk about prompts, we're talking about asking an AI something and asking it to turn it to return some result. The problem a lot of people are having with this, this is the challenge again with those of us who are middle age, is that we assume that the result it returned is the, is the best result out there. That is not the case when you're dealing with AI. You have to continue to keep regenerating that prompt. <clears throat> I ask it one question, it returns something, and I say, well, that's really good. Can you explain that to me from a feminine perspective? Can you explain that to me from a person that's angry? Can you uh, write the script and, and, and help me make it so that it de-escalates the situation. Can you write a script that helps me escalate the situation? Can you write a script from the perspective of my grandmother? Can you write this script and just keep going down that path? And what you're going to find is just an incredible refinement. One of my great friends, who's also an incredible podcaster, he and I had a show together uh, for many years called Triple My Triple Bottom Line. Uh, Angelo Fernando, I'll call you out here. Angelo was saying, oh, I struggled with this a little bit because I went in and I said, you know, write a Volkswagen ad from a perspective of, uh, you know, from from like the Mad Men, right? From those that era of of folks, and he got a very very limited response. Well, I was able to go in using a prompt generator. I took his exact prompt, put it into the generator. It spit back out this entire paragraph of, I want you to imagine for a moment that you are an ad agency in the 1950s and a customer comes to you and they're selling Volkswagens and they want to attract young, you know, they want to attract men that have been recently divorced that, that, that want to feel like they're driving a performance vehicle and re really get into this. And it created amazing stuff. Even at the end of it, I said, you know, uh, take all of that we've learned so far and turn it into a Bob Dylan song and bam, it spit out a whole song with courses and, you know, courses and verses and bridges and the whole work. So there's a lot to this idea of AI. And I would really say to you that I do believe it is going to affect every single job on this planet. But the people who are going to really capitalize on this are the people who start integrating it right now, because it will make you smarter. It will make you faster. It will make you better. And it will do it right now today with the free tools that are out there on the internet. All right. If you've got other questions, throw them in the comments, hit me up in my DMs, hit me up in my text messages, find me. I'm happy to answer these things. I'm having hours and hours of conversations every day with people that are AI experts. And I'm uh, really working hard to try to pivot the convergence from the Web3 space into adopting this AI piece too and using AI in my business. Now, I'm going to tell you the best resource out there, and I know many of you probably aren't on TikTok, but AI Daddy, he's the king. He is the king. He's local here to Arizona. He understands process automation. He has been a software developer. He's built multiple businesses. He is now the king of AI on TikTok. He's also on YouTube. Most of his videos are really short. He and I are starting to do some collabs to start to bring you some really deep conversations about AI and its effect on humankind. All right. So again, post your comments, make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all the things that you're supposed to do with social media that I know you won't do. And until next time.